thanks y'all for uh, showing up for this. Um, uh, my name is Andy, and I'm a generosity officer with the United Church of Christ. I've been doing that for six years. So usually I come to these kind of events and do workshops around stewardship and giving and philanthropy, but Jay did such a great job uh, <laughs> yesterday. Uh, and when I saw the workshop proposals come out, I thought, you know, I'm just going to throw this out there. Um, I've never taught this before, so thank you for being uh, guinea pigs uh, around this. Um, and it's a practice that I've developed over the last 25 years or so of working on learning how to breathe, <laughs> really. I mean, um, and then all that comes with that, you know, the centering, the grounding, um, and really inhabiting the, the creation story where God takes the dirt and the mud and breathes life into us. Uh, so how do we how do we nurture that? And remembering that in uh, many languages, including Greek and Hebrew, the word for spirit, wind, and breath is all the same. So uh, if we're going to inhabit that spirit or have that spirit inhabit us, then how do we most fully uh, enter it and cooperate with it and, and learn around it? Um, so couple things. Well, um, three stories around breathing. So I ran cross country in high school. I was not very good at it. Um, I also ran to keep in shape for basketball. Uh, but I wanted to be better and I would ask sometimes the better runners how to get better. And they would say to me, you need to breathe. I really had no idea what they were talking about. Like, I thought I was breathing. You know, like, I'm alive, so I'm breathing. Um, I can't catch my breath when I'm running, but uh, uh, so that was kind of a, a first clue, and then, um, I don't know, I guess I was around 30 or so when uh, I tried to move a piano uh, in our house, and my back uh, told me that I shouldn't have done that. Uh, and from then I had, I had lower back issues for quite a while, and it was in learning how to breathe that I realized that a part of the reason I had those issues is that, that I wasn't expanding my diaphragm. That I was like holding, you know, I want to be skinny and fit, and so I'm holding my stomach in, and you know, so it's, it's not allowing that curvature in my back, so it's pressing my back out, and um, so that was at least one of the reasons that, that my back uh, talked to me in that moment. And then perhaps an even greater realization came uh, just this past fall. Uh, in September, my dad, who's 75 and rather active, uh, had a heart attack. Uh, no history of heart disease before that. Um, fortunately, caught it, got to the hospital, um, and uh, ended up having quadruple bypass surgery successfully. He's, he's doing well now, uh, back playing racquetball again, so that's good. But when he was in the hospital, and I was there with him, and if you've ever been with anyone that's had any kind of heart issues, or lots of different hospitalizations, they, they give you that breathing thing and, and ask you to breathe into it, or other times they'll come and just tell you to take a deep breath. And so they came and, and they told my dad to take a deep breath, and he went like this. And I went, oh my, that's it. Like it was all in upper chest and shoulders, and literally sucking the stomach in to take a deep breath. Instead of, you know, filling it all the way down down to the depths. And, um, and so over the years, fortunately, I've been able to, to put this practice together from a whole variety of, of places. Uh, I have a morning practice, not because I'm a morning person, but because I have kids. Uh, I started getting up early, and I'm an introvert, and I needed some peace and quiet. <laughs> I'd rather do things later in the day. Uh, but, but that's what's worked for me. So whenever, you know, there's a whole bunch of different pieces to this practice. Uh, that whatever works for you, take that, you know, and use it at different times of the day. Um, sometimes I use them when I'm trying to get to sleep and I can't get to sleep. It helps calm my body. Or when Tracy was talking this morning, Tracy Howe, um, in my my favorite passage in all the scriptures from Transfiguration and the baptism of Jesus, when the voice of God, in my translation, says. Uh, you are my beloved in whom I delight. Which is just a great breath prayer, too, in, at times, to just to breathe with those phrases. You are my beloved uh, in whom I delight. Um, in, um, in her 
book, This Here Flesh. And if you're familiar with Cole Arthur Riley, uh, This Here Flesh is just an incredible book. I mean, I would recommend it to anyone, um, at least apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, read it over the past few months, and just so, so powerful. She's also the author of, or compiler, author and compiler of Black Liturgies. Uh, which is a social media presence that also is very uh, powerful and deep and wonderful. Um, and in it, uh, in her chapter on rest, she says, Stillness makes for a capable mirror. Look down in a rough and fast current and you won't see a thing. Still water allows you to lean in without danger and really see yourself. And in doing so, you may remember a liberty over yourself that is easily forgotten when things are jostling about you. So there's a reason that our Christian tradition, many world religions have this practice of breathing and meditation uh, as a part of their disciplines. Um, I also want to say, well, so when the application came out and we're all in, in various forms of caring, um, it just seems important to me that we're caring for ourselves and we're centered, we're giving so much, uh, so much of the time. But I also want to say it's not a, it's not a panacea for oppression. You know, too often companies and people have said, well, just, you know, here's some yoga, you know, we're not going to treat you well, but do yoga, that'll make it better. Or here's a meditation space, you know, we're not going to give you good benefits, but meditate, and that will take care of your health. So this is not a panacea for oppression in any way. Um, and then, I uh, just want to share this from the Book of Joy before we get to the practice. The Book of Joy is the book uh, Desmond Tutu and Arch our Archbishop Desmond Tutu uh, and the Dalai Lama together had a conversation. And um, in that, uh, the author, Douglas Abrams, uh, says, when the Archbishop and I were working on creating a training course for peace ambassadors and activists, who go into conflict regions. He explained how peace must come from within. We cannot bring peace if we do not have inner peace. Similarly, we cannot hope to make the world a better, happier place if we do not also aspire for this in our own lives. The more we heal our own pain, the more we can turn to the pain of others. The goal is not just to create joy for ourselves, but, as the Archbishop poetically phrased it, to be a reservoir of joy, an oasis of peace, a pool of serenity that can ripple out to all those around you. So I actually have this written up in a handout and pass out. We're going to walk over. When I was writing it up, I was like, well, it doesn't sound so, it doesn't seem so simple that I had to take two pages, but I tried to make it <laughs> as detailed as possible if those pieces you, you want to use. Um, so use it as uh, you see fit. Um, there's no perfect or right way to do it. There are, you know, certain ways that practitioners over the ages have, have said help, but maybe not for you. So find what works um, uh, for you. Cross-legged, you know, that's 
seemed like more uh, guru-like or something, and more holy, I don't know. <laughs> but in reading about that and then trying to do it, one of the things they said is, look, people who sit that way to meditate and find it comfortable have do been doing that since they were kids, and actually even generationally, and they've stretched their head muscles to be able to do that comfortably. Why am I not stretched that way? As much yoga as I do. Um, so find a comfortable space, perhaps light a candle or incense. Didn't think they'd let us do that here. Um, and then becoming present. And this, these pieces are primarily from Thich Nhat Hanh, um, who says, like, just say to yourself, breathing in and breathing out, you know, just to get present. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And then uh, one of the other features, I'm not sure which one, you know, there's always those things that come to us when we're trying to get present. Those uh, thoughts, ideas, to-do lists, etc. Um, one of the other teachers said to set those aside lightly as a cloud, a feather upon a cloud, um, and just trust that they'll return. And me personally, if they keep returning, then I just either take my phone or a pen and write them down. <laughs> so I've got them somewhere I can just really let them go. And then there's this um, four, seven, eight breathing rhythm. So. Taking a deep breath for four counts, and then holding it for seven counts, and then breathing out for eight. And that's the one that I use when I'm trying to go to bed at night, when I'm trying to go to sleep and I can't relax. Uh, to do that a few times has really shown to relax our nervous systems uh, and to bring us into a greater sense of peace. And then, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh invites us to say, breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Breathing in, I calm my body. I don't know about you, off my body's not calm. And breathing out, I smile. And um, sometimes it's barely a smile. Sometimes it's a full smile. Um, so to do that a few times. Then this next section, uh, that I've titled Filled with Light, um, it's most recently and popularly taught uh, by Wim Hof. Have you ever heard of Wim Hof? W-I-M-H-O-F. But he clearly says that it's from uh, ancient traditions, Tibetan, I think, uh, particularly. But it was new to me in that most of the breath work that I've done has been about breathing in and holding it, and then breathing out. And this method is breathing out uh, so as you'll see there, we do that 30 times, breathing out as if you're blowing up a balloon, and then on the 30th time, breathing out and holding your breath out as long as possible. And while you're doing that, uh, what I like to do, if you're invited to do it or not, is to invite uh, sunshine and warmth to be coming down and, and healing uh, wherever it needs to in my body. Sometimes I direct it to places, and other times I just let it flow. Um, and then before you gasp, <laughs> before you gasp, take another breath in, breathe out, and hold it again uh, as long as you can. It's usually a lot shorter the second time around. Uh, and then repeat that process. So we'll do that twice. And then after the second time of that, we'll do the four, seven, eight again uh, twice, and then uh, take a few deep breaths. So that's down to the bottom of the filled with the light section there. And then um, movement. After that, I usually put my hands in a prayer position and, and bow uh, uh, forward. It's early in the morning when I'm doing this usually, and it's a good stretch for my sides and lower back, and also this posture of humility and, and gratitude. Um, and then the next piece comes from Reza Menikin. If you're familiar with his book, My, Grandma, my Grandmother's Hands, um, it's got some great body practices for people who are uh, doing healing work and community organizing work and justice work. And uh, this is one that I picked up um, because it addresses the psoas in particular, which is one of the few, as some of you know, know probably better than I do, but one of the few muscles that connects our upper and lower bodies. Um, and it's also when we brace ourselves, it's what tightens. So when we are thinking about so many of the things we were talking about, in the past hour or two, uh, we can find ourselves tense and braced. So uh, he invites us to, to turn our bodies. So I usually take, you know, side of the chair or something, turn the head and body, and just take some deep breaths and look back and, and realize that 
at least in this moment, there's no one chasing me. I'm safe. I don't need to brace my body. So to breathe in and to relax the body and then to come back through center and, and turn in the other direction and do the same. And then there's a second uh, body practice there. Uh, so the third, well, third uh, point down on the back side. Um, he talks about a lot. Uh, he, he writes a lot about the vagus nerve. And there's a lot of teaching uh, around that. Somewhat new science and understanding that we're still trying to figure out that goes throughout the body. Um, and also, we often don't... Uh, celebrate and appreciate and, and heal our bodies. Uh, and so this is a way of appreciating and healing our bodies. So what I do is, is um, and it crosses, it's also about crossing the meridian uh, of our bodies and bringing healing that way. So I usually put my hands lightly on my body, but you can also do more energetically, just right above the body, and just to uh, allow that to healing to happen all across the torso, and then what I find particularly helpful is, is down the side, uh, a lot of lymph systems there, and kind of flushing those out, and then I even take it all the way down the side of my legs, down my feet, in front of my legs, and then back up to my shoulders, uh, and neck, and uh, we can all use a massage most of the time, so you might as well give yourself one. Uh, and then uh, the final piece to the, the sitting is to just, again, I told you I'm looking outside, I'm looking out in particular at a beautiful sycamore tree uh, in our neighborhood, but uh, I put my hands in an open position and uh, say I embrace all my relations, uh, a phrase from our Native American siblings, recognizing the interconnectedness of all creation and, and us. And so, Sometimes I say, you know, I embrace the sky and the birds and the clouds and the sun and the moon and the, the soil and the creepy crawlies and everything that's in the ground and the trees and the growing things and the two leggeds and yes, even the four leggeds. Uh, I embrace all my relations and I receive their embrace. Right? Without the trees, without the bush, without the green things growing, we wouldn't be breathing. Without everything else, we wouldn't be nourished. So it's a way of recognizing uh, and expressing gratitude for our interconnectedness with all things. Uh, and then again, uh, just about. And then the final piece is uh, a journaling piece. Uh, that's how I do it. But you could just do it reflecting uh, as well. So again, I've been a journaler most of my life. And so this is one concise way when I don't have a lot of time. But I still, I do it every day. So I'll usually journal a couple pages every day, but I make sure I do this at the end, or if I don't have time for a couple pages, just a little piece. Um, the first is just three things I accomplished yesterday. Well, we often don't take time to, re to celebrate what we actually did the day before. And it can be something from work, it can be something personal, it can be something home, with friends, with your own self, whatever. We want to write that you accomplished yesterday and celebrate that. Uh, two things I need today. Again, need to do today. Again, same thing. Sometimes it's something from work, sometimes it's something with my family or in the house or in the community. Um, also, it just helps me focus. Like, uh, what are two things? Just, you know, if I can get two things done today, because some days feel like that. That's all I can get done. Uh, and of course, you can pick whatever numbers here you want. This is a 3 2 1 system I picked up somewhere. And one thing I'm grateful for. So just, you know, entering into that spirit of gratitude. What, what am I grateful for today? And then uh, a self-affirmation. So um, I, I am, and whatever it is, uh, it can be as, as broad as I am worthy, I am powerful, I am love. Um, it can be as specific as I'm a good father. Um, I, you know, whatever it is, it's a piece of self-affirmation about who we are uh, as people and who we want to be. And then I always uh, name a fear which is often related to my self-affirmation. Um, but I think naming our fears helps us address them rather than just leaving them amorphous uh, around us. And then what is one way today that I'll nurture my heart or soul? Uh, and so that can be 
for me, it's uh, often moving my body, how I move my body. So that's that's the way I experience spirituality, whether it's running, biking, playing. Sometimes it's spending time with my wife. Uh, sometimes it's getting something done that I really need to get done because that's kind of troubling me. Uh, sometimes it's playing a game with my daughter or son. Uh, whatever, there's all kinds of ways to nurture her and soul. So, um, any thoughts, questions before we just actually do this? How long does it take before you get into the, you know, the mojo of it? Does it take you a week or two? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't have a good answer. <laughs> I mean, what I've heard generally is it takes about 15 times to practice something before it kind of settles into a routine. Um, what I notice, you know, sometimes after doing this, I do notice a marked difference in my being, uh, whether it's my body or my spirit or otherwise. Lots of times I don't, <laughs> just to be honest, right? Lots of times I don't. But what I do notice is if I skip it for two or three or four days, I notice a difference in my body, in my spirit, in my soul. So something was happening, even if I wasn't noticing. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I'm really bad about doing it when I'm traveling, um, just because there's so much going on, and I'm so excited to see so many things. And the other piece is, um, every morning I get up and make a cup of coffee. Uh, else does. I make one cup at a time. So I make a cup of coffee, and I usually do some reading before that. And then the incentive for me is like, if I want the second cup of coffee, I have to do this. <laughs> because sometimes it doesn't seem value, valuable. Sometimes it's not something our culture values. Oh, you're gonna sit in silence for 20 minutes, great. Uh, you know, so I, I will, it's also why I put several different practices in this. It helps me to kind of be moving from one thing to another. It's great to just sit and breathe for 20 minutes. Don't get me wrong, like that's really good. But uh, this works better for me. So, uh, and it's also been these little pieces that I can take <coughs> throughout the day and use uh, at different times. Um, there's one other piece there. out breath, try to take it all the way up, get all the air out of your system and just hold it at the top for a, a second or two. And then take a deep breath in. Now 
let's take some deep breaths in and out, saying, breathing in, I calm my body, breathing out, I smile. Just a note to feel free to adjust in your seat. Sometimes I feel like when we're doing breathing and meditation, it's like, oh, you gotta stay still. It's okay. Adjust as needed. Now we'll move into the 30 out breaths. So just breathe in normally and then breathe out. If you're filling up a balloon, then we'll do that for 30 seconds. And on the 30th time, just hold it out and invite that light to bring healing, wholeness to our life. you're holding that out breath after 30 breaths out, you might find yourself exhaling even a little more, finding reservoirs of breath that didn't, didn't make their way out.
seven, eight, taking four, four, count breath in, nice and deep. Holding it for seven counts and breathing out for eight to do that twice. And just a few deep breaths after that. Taking some deep breaths. Again, maybe even breathing in with that. Breathing in, I relax my body. Inviting our psoas in particular, but whatever needs to relax. And recognize that we're safe in this moment. And return to center. And breathe out as you turn to the left. your hands either touching your body or lightly or uh, above your body energetically and uh, let's uh, stimulate that vagus nerve by moving our hands across the center line of our, our torso up and down uh, our torso and on the sides of our body of all our relations as they offer us life food breath oxygen and so much more feel that unconditional love Once again, move to prayer and a, and a vow of gratitude. And then just take a few minutes to use those prompts if you haven't had and want to write them. Otherwise, if you just want to think about what are three things you accomplished yesterday. What are two things you need to do today? What's one thing you're grateful for? A self-affirmation. 
a fear. What's one way that you will nurture your heart or soul? If you're willing, uh, share with us one of the pieces from that uh, moving into the day, the, the journaling reflection piece. Do what something you accomplished or something you need to do today or you're grateful for or an affirmation of fear. One way you'll nurture your heart or soul. So I'll start. One of the things I accomplished yesterday was uh, I opened up to a colleague and it ended up getting a little vulnerable with her and ended up just being a really incredible and nurturing conversation for both of us. So, um, the nurturing my heart and soul today. We're, we're all going to the Denver Art Museum. Reflecting on all the wonderful uh, stories uh, that are being shared, the connections that are being made here, so really taking that to heart. I didn't know which session I was coming to, but I was <laughs> sharing with Kristen after what was a surprisingly very powerful session this morning. I wanted to do some intro reflection and so I chose to come here to get some techniques to do that. So that's <coughs> that's what was hitting me today. You nurture your heart and soul. That's mm -hmm. what you did. Thank you. I'm really grateful for how many ways um, I've been experiencing um, support and um, direction even about receiving um, it's my experience that I'm, I, many like me, are focused on giving and doing the out breath, you know, uh, and the wisdom shared earlier today and in other ways and in this session about it, it has to come in and go out. It has to come in and go out. And I just feel like God's giving me some good uh, companions and uh, help around that balance in a very embodied way right now.
exactly where I need to be. Yeah, that, that's that really that self-affirmation piece, right? I'm enough. I'm exactly where I need to be. And it's what uh, Jamar was inviting us to at the very beginning to be fully present. and imagining the, the sunlight and warmth bringing healing and, and health and wholeness to my body and sometimes inviting love, joy, and peace in there uh, as well. Um, I bring some humor and joy to it. Like I, I invite it to come all the way down through my body and down to my toes and then I like imagine it like the light just like shooting out my toes. <laughs> like, so I kind of like move my toes around sometimes like the whole world and the crowds. Uh, and then also when I get to my hands in the same way like scientific research that's been done over the past decade, 10 to 20 years, just about the impact uh, that these can have on our well-being. Um, I was both surprised when I added that, um, that middle piece of the 30 breaths out, holding your breath out, how much that impacted my body um, and the health of my body and how my body felt. Um, and again, people have done uh, uh, studies on that and seen it. It's actually used with a lot of high-level athletes as well, use that. Uh, and then like the four, seven, eight breath, and there are a number of those rhythms that I'm sure many of you have experienced. There's also like a box breath, four, 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 four in, hold, four, four out, hold, four. Um, those kind of things are often uh, used by people in um, really dramatic situations. So um, caregivers, military, police, because they, they do see that it helps to just be calm in the midst of uh, the challenges. You know, to listen to Tracy this morning, you know, when we fight, we win. Um, and how, how do we be agents of peace in the midst of the violence, really? teacher it was, or which person, maybe you'll remember, but one of the great uh, uh, spiritual teachers said that, that they meditate an hour every day, unless it's a really busy day, and then they meditate two hours. <laughs> so I have a long ways to go to get anything uh, like that, but again, this is um, something that I found incredibly helpful in my life, and I'd be curious to hear about your experiences that we just had over the past 20 minutes, but also if there are other pieces that you practice that you would have. I mean, this is a, a learning community. It's not just me teaching. We're learning together. So other either thoughts on your experience of pieces of this or things that, that you might add or invite us to? Now, one of the things I do most days is actually slapping the body to get the lymph going. What a physical slap. It's not just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you start from up here down, making sure you do this because that's where you, you start moving stuff out and you work and tapping and then physical turning. Slap, 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 slap. Don't abuse yourself, but <laughs> right down to your level. I do that for a hundred times. A hundred times? Most mornings, yes. Wow. How long does that take? Oh, it's probably biggest thing long. Twisting your back so you're turning out so you give yourself a nice stretch. Yeah. yeah. Right? And it's coming, you're coming physically right down. Right. Until you let the people go back up. That's it. Yeah. And you can see it on YouTube. There's, there's practitioners out there who do physical attraction to your body like that. But the lift doesn't move unless you move. Right. Uh, right. So that's the importance of exercise and then and getting a new system to take stuff out of your body. Mm -hmm. And it's a good, that's a great thing even to do in the middle of the day, right? Especially if you're, like me, working a job where I sit way too much. You know, take those 5, 10, 15 minute breaks where you're actually moving. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. So great. Thank you. Yeah. Stretching is important. Yeah. You're so tense. Yeah. Any other 
practices that you've experienced or, or reflections on when you're going. You know, it usually takes me, especially if I'm leading a group like this, I've done it a couple times, but you know, it takes me about to the second time, second portion of the 30 out breaths to settle in and not think about, oh, what's everybody thinking? How's it going? What did I forget to say? Just let it go. some form of keeping Sabbath, that, um, that the research about all these different facets of what we need to be well physically, mentally, spiritually, particularly in our highly accelerated world and our, uh, you know, just even in our lifetimes, how increasingly bombarded we are on every level. Um, and I just know spiritually, it's, it makes a really big difference. The way my schedule goes, I keep it on Friday. And I keep it between 10 and 4, because that's what I can do. I would love to do more, but what it means for me is I, I unplug between 10 and 4 on Fridays. Mm -hmm. And the criteria is that I just do things that feel nourishing and refreshing in the awareness of God. Mm -hmm. So I could clean out a closet if for that day that's what really feels refreshing and good for me for some reason. And I do it thanking God for my home, for my clothes, for my, you know, I do it that way. And sometimes it's really more active. You know, I'm going to take a walk by the pond and I'm going to really notice God's creation or whatever. And sometimes I just need rest. Mm -hmm. Literally, I just need rest. And whatever it is, it's just, it's made a huge difference in how I go through the world. And I think of these little times as little Sabbaths, you know, like 20 minutes in my day of Sabbath. Sabbath for me is if I can, what's so helpful for me is if I can have one of the weekend days with nothing scheduled. Right. Like just nothing scheduled. Doesn't mean I won't do things, right. but just nothing like I have to do this today.
Monday morning. And oh, by the way, if you text me or email me at 6 or 7 or 8 o'clock on Sunday night, I will not be responding to you first thing Monday morning because I would not even have the benefit. Of, you know, I'm not going to spend my Sunday night checking my email and my text messages so that I can respond to you first thing Monday morning when I'm supposed to not be looking at messages and texts at all during the weekend. So it, 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 it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It's, you have to manage expectations. You have to, to your point, you have to really, you have to actually take that step of turning it all off. Mm -hmm. And then, and then being willing to advocate for yourself if somebody gives you pushback. So, so it's it's a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's recognizing our our need to be needed and letting go of some of that, some of our ego around. Oh, oh yeah. you know, I, <laughs> it strokes my need when somebody needs me. You know, right now, you know, I need to be needed. No, I can let go of that. They'll right. be okay unless it's a real emergency. Though. Right, right. And if we've done our work, then there should be no real emergencies. Right. And if it's a real emergency. You should be calling 911. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had the um, fortunate pleasure uh, at work. They somehow changed over our email system that I would have had to get a new um, app or something on my phone. I would have had to call the tech department to figure out how to get it working on my phone again. I said, I don't need my work email on my phone. Uh -huh. You know, my cell phone number is out there everywhere. People really need me. They can call our text, but I'm not checking my email on my phone. Yeah. So I got plenty. I have an iPad. I have a laptop. There's plenty of other ways I can check my email. But um, that was one boundary that I was able to avoid. Good. Well, thank you all. Thank you for. And I think there's also something powerful about being silent together. Um, I mean, it's powerful doing it on our own, but the Quakers are on something about being silent together. Uh, so thank you for that and for all your insights. Um, yeah, uh, I know I have to run up to my room before I get into the bus and get some thanks. So again, thanks. Thank and, you very uh, much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it.